82 regular season games. That's the total amount of games that each NBA team has to play in regular season since 1967. Nowadays, if a player plays in 82 games, it's considered an achievement. I recently talked about unbreakable NBA record, held by John Stockman who played all 82 games in 16 seasons. Click on the icon in the right upper corner to see that video. But what if I told you that some players have played more than 82 games? You probably would say, yeah, but if the player gets traded, he might play in 83 games, and you're right. We have some players that have played in 83 games, but I want to talk about something more impressive. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well, I'm Purple Prince, and today I want to talk about an NBA Hall of Fame player who once played 88 regular season games. Walt Bellamy was born on July 24, 1939, in the town of New Bern, North Carolina. Throughout his childhood, Bellamy was big and athletic. He played center on JT Barber High School basketball team, but he also was a good football player. He made All-State in football as a senior and led JT Barber High School to the state title in 1956. But his real future was in basketball. Standing at 6'10 in 1957, Bellamy accepted a scholarship from Indiana University. And he was a beast there. In three seasons, he averaged more than 20 points and 15 rebounds per game. In his final college game, Bellamy grabbed 33 rebounds and set a school record. Bellamy also got a chance to play in 1960 Olympic basketball team, where alongside Oscar Robertson, Jerry West and Jerry Lucas, he won a gold medal. Walt Bellamy was the cherry of the 1961 NBA draft, and New York Knicks really wanted to draft him. But that year, NBA awarded the first pick to Chicago Packers, who were entering the league. There even were rumors that Knicks offered $100,000 to Chicago's owners just so they entered the league a year later, so they could pick Bellamy. But that didn't happen, and Bellamy was now a player of Chicago Packers. Bellamy was a monster in his rookie year, averaging 31.6 points and 19 rebounds, and Packers were the first NBA team to start five African Americans. Bellamy also made an all-star game in his first season. The Packers team as a whole though didn't experience much success. They won only 18 games in Bellamy's rookie season. After an unsuccessful season, the team was renamed to Chicago Zephyrs, but that didn't change the success. Next year Bellamy was still very good with averages of 27.9 points and 16.4 rebounds, but once again that didn't result in a team success. Zephyrs won only 25 games. And after two unsuccessful seasons, Chicago Zephyrs was now Baltimore Bullets. In his first season with Baltimore Bullets, Bellamy did not disappoint. 27-17 was a season average in points and rebounds. But what did disappoint was his team's success. Just 31 wins in the regular season and as a result, missed playoffs for the first three years of Bellamy's career. Next season, Bellamy got some help. He was his usual self, averaging 25-15 but others stepped up as well. Three more players were averaging close to 20 points per game and in total five Baltimore Bullets averaged double-digit points and three of them averaged double-doubles. Baltimore Bullets still weren't a championship contender, but they won 37 out of 80 games and Bellamy made the playoffs for the first time in his career. Bullets got to West Division Finals where they ultimately lost to Los Angeles Lakers 2-4 in the series. Walt Bellamy was solid, but not spectacular. He was one of the best rebounders with 15 rebounds per game, but he wasn't scoring as much, averaging just 20.9 points per game in the playoffs. Chicago and Baltimore clearly didn't get the success they expected by bringing Bellamy on the team. So after four unsuccessful full seasons in Chicago and Baltimore, Knicks finally got their wish. Bellamy was traded to New York. With another star on the team in Willis Reed, Bellamy had some more help but the team's success didn't come with it. Both were very dominant forces under the basket, but this was a time when the league had an unbelievable pool of great big men. With Bellamy, Reed, Dick Barnett and a total of 8 players averaging double digit points, New York Knicks managed to win just 30 games and didn't make the playoffs. Knicks were especially miserable playing against Boston Celtics, losing all 10 of their matchups. After missing the playoffs in his first season with the Knicks, Bellamy did help New York make the playoffs next year, albeit with a losing record of 36 wins and 45 losses. Once again though, Celtics were the ultimate wall. 
In regular season, Knicks lost all 9 games to the Celtics, and the Green Machine eliminated Knicks in the first round of playoffs, 3-1 in the series. After years of not being successful, Bellamy finally had his first winning record in 1967-68 NBA regular season. They won 43 out of 82 games, but it was a short celebration. In the first round of the playoffs, New York Knicks met another dominant force in Will Chamberlain and 76ers, and ended up losing in 6 games. Bellamy was solid with 20 points and 16 rebounds per game, but he also couldn't stop Chamberlain, who had averages of 25 points and 24 rebounds. Seeing that the team can't win, New York Knicks decided to end Walt Bellamy experiment, and midway through the 1968-69 season, Bellamy was traded to Detroit Pistons, which was the legendary season he played 88 games because of a scheduling situation. The amount of games played is still a record, and maybe I didn't think long enough before I made a video about John Stockton, and actually, 88 games played is the record that even theoretically can't be broken anymore. Bellamy was still getting his individual numbers, but he was also part of a miserable 730 road record and once again missed the playoffs. Anyways, his Detroit stint was very short. Next season he was playing just 20 minutes per game and midway through the season, Detroit traded him to Atlanta. In Atlanta he reverted back to a rebounding monster and spent 4 more solid seasons with the Atlanta Hawks albeit without much playoff success. Before retiring, Bellamy also played one game with New Orleans Jazz, but that was it. Unfortunately, you could say that Bellamy was a victim of Boston Celtics era and the era of very talented and unbelievably athletic big men, which I think was the main reason he didn't experience any playoff success. He didn't accomplish much as a team player, but he was a 4-time All-Star and a Rookie of the Year. His career spanned 14 seasons, he played on 7 teams and he averaged 20.1 points per game, 13.7 rebounds and played a total of 1,043 games. In his career he scored 20,941 points, which at the time of his retirement was the 6th best result, and he is still number 11 on all-time rebounds list, with more than 14,000 rebounds. He definitely made his mark on the basketball world, and in 1993, Bellamy was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, Bellamy is not with us anymore. He died in 2013 at the age of 74, but his play and his 88 played games record definitely enhances NBA history. So that's it guys, do you have anything to add? Do you think Bellamy underperformed or he was a victim of the big man era? Leave a comment below, like this video and subscribe for future NBA content. I'm Purple Prince and I'm out. Let me ride on you and you can ride on. We can do it all at night. We can have a ball at night.